Thank you for that gracious introduction. Thank you to all of you. What an honor to be here tonight. I'd like to start, of course, by congratulating the scholarship holders. You've been identified by this great organization, the Daniels Fund, as America's next generation of leaders. It's a humbling experience for me to be standing in front of you, understanding and thinking about what you're going to achieve over the course of your careers. And I know you'll always remember that you got your start being identified under the name of a truly great leader, Bill Daniels. We had a privilege of, of seeing a little bit about his life. I've learned over the past couple of years more about Bill Daniels than I knew before, because I didn't have the privilege of knowing him personally. But it's incredible. The more you learn about Bill Daniels, the more you learn about leadership. He was an entrepreneur, and what do entrepreneurs do? They create jobs and opportunity and growth. They serve their communities. But more than that, Bill Daniels lived with passion and love. He had a strong sense of gratitude for this country and for the system that made it possible for a boy who came from relative poverty to turn into a man of great means, only in America. It's an incredible thing. It's something that we can admire. And it's still something that I hope that we can share. But when I look around today at what's going on in America, I have some fears. I'm a little afraid that Bill Daniels, if he were alive today, would be worried about what's going on in our country. We've just, as you all know, endured a terrible recession, an awful financial crisis. But that's not the problem. Those things are relatively normal in our economy. Things go up and down. The real problem is how we're recovering from that and the legacy that that's leaving on our country. The legacy that all of you, as the next generation of leaders, are going to have to face. What do we see when we look around America today? Well, as you heard just a minute ago, I'm an economist. What do economists say are happening in our country today? Well, they tell you that America is on a slow trajectory of economic recovery. That's a lie. It's a lie because, in fact, there are two recoveries in this country, one that's very strong and fast and the other that's not happening at all. And we have to confront this reality. What do I mean? If you're in the top half in income in America today, the recovery is strong. Luxury good purchases are up. Unemployment is down, home sales are up, things are okay. But if you're in the bottom half, what do you see in America today? Coming out of this recession, what's happening in the bottom half in this country? The answer is that unemployment's about 15%. The answer is that still, now for the fifth year running, the average family in the bottom half of the income distribution in America has less purchasing power than it had the year before. Think about this. If you're in the bottom half, on average, you're poorer this year than you were last year, and that's been true for five years. Nothing like that's happened since the 1930s. And here's the worst one of all. Economic mobility. The center of the American dream. The thing that lifted Bill Daniels up. It's declining. I don't want that to be true. I run a think tank, a research organization in Washington, D.C., completely dedicated to the American dream, completely dedicated to the principles of free enterprise. I don't want economic mobility to be falling, but the truth is that economic mobility has fallen by a third. If you're in poverty, it's a third harder to get into the middle class or above than it was in 1980. The conclusion is that things are tough, and they're still tough for people who are disadvantaged. So who do we look to to solve this problem? Who do we look to? And the answer is, typically, we look to politicians. But we're not getting much help there, quite frankly. Let's think about what, about what we're hearing from our politicians in Washington, D.C. today. Some are saying that people at the bottom can't help themselves. And so what we have to do is to force people at the top to support them more because people at the top just aren't generous enough, that it's not fair that they're not paying enough in taxes, and we have to redistribute more money. Other people say 
The problem is that the people at the bottom, they're takers. They just don't want to work. This is not a productive argument from today's politicians to solve the problems at hand. Neither message is right, and neither reflects real leadership for our country. What's real leadership when times are hard? Let's turn back to the wisdom of Bill Daniels. Bill Daniels knew that leadership isn't blaming people at the bottom. It also isn't taking something from somebody who earned it to give it to somebody who didn't. That's not real leadership. Real leadership is finding a way to lift people up by giving them opportunity and rewarding hard work and personal responsibility. Those were his beliefs. That's why he did this for you, for the scholars. That's why he did what he did throughout his legendary career. And, and I believe, based on what I've learned about Bill Daniels, that's what he wants you to do as well. To find ways to lift people up. People who are disadvantaged, people who are hurting, people who are just barely getting by. So here's the question for the night. How do you do that? How can we all be a little bit more like Bill Daniels? What can we do to lift people up? Because times are tough. What do people need? And the answer comes in two simple words. The answer is earned success. Earned success is the belief that you can create value with your life and create value in the lives of other people. You heard about success all the way through the video that we just watched. But earned success is the key. It's not being given something for free. It's earning it and having the opportunity to show what you're made of. That's the opportunity in front of you. That's what you receive from the scholarship. And that's what we are charged to find ways to give to everybody else, to be true leaders. Creating value with your life and creating value in the lives of other people. I'm not talking about money here. I'm not talking about getting rich. I'm not talking about wealth at all. On the contrary, people who earn their success define it any way that they want. For years, I've worked with social entrepreneurs. People who count their wealth not in money but in souls saved or kids not going to bed hungry or people becoming literate or the environment cleaned up. Real social entrepreneurs earn their success. And here's the, here's the reality, here's the beautiful thing about earned success. People who earn their success have the secret to happiness. How do I know this? I know this because I've looked at the research on this subject, so let me share one little fact with you. <clears throat> if you take two people, this is based on research from the University of Chicago. If you take two people who are precisely the same in every way, same age, same sex, same religion, same race, same region of residence, even the same level of education, and they both feel that they have earned their success in life, but one is earning eight times as much money as the second, they'll be equally likely to say that they're very happy about their lives. Money can't buy happiness. Earned success brings happiness, and that's the essence of creating an opportunity society. Earned success is great, but it has an opposite. There's a dark side. And that's something that Bill Daniels was really worried about too. The opposite of earned success is learned helplessness. Learned helplessness is what happens when somebody takes away what you've earned or gives you something that you didn't earn. That's what happens when people become passive and depressed and they give up. It's almost the perfect secret to dependency and unhappiness. It's not right to do that to people. Our goal as leaders has to be, what can I do today so that more people, they earn their success? What can I do today so that fewer people learn their helplessness? Only in creating value with your life and, li and value in the lives of other people can you lift other people up through opportunity, avoid the cancer of envy in our society, and see the potential in everyone. Only through earned success. Can we be leaders like Bill Daniels? So what does earned success require? How do we share it? Well, it requires a certain set of virtues from you, from all of us. Things that you're learning, that you've learned over the past few days in this program, that you'll learn more as you go through the journey of your lives. Things like integrity, 
hard work, trust, accountability, fairness, respect. These are the virtues that we learned about just a second ago that were embraced so fully by the founder. But you also need a system. Virtues are important. But we also need a system that makes it so people will earn their success, be lifted up, and not learn their helplessness. We need a system in our economy and a system in our culture. What's the system? It's one where our skills can meet our passions, where you can do whatever you want with your God-given talents. We need a system in which we can enjoy and see the value that we create, where we celebrate hard work and merit. We don't tear it down and denigrate it and treat it with envy. We need a system where we make our economic decisions and we live with the consequences. Well, here's the good news. That system has a name. It already exists. It's the system that was celebrated by the founder of this scholarship and this great organization. That system is called free enterprise. Free enterprise is the system that lifted up Bill Daniels, that created this beautiful place that give us all of our opportunities. It gives us our happiness by allowing us to earn our success. Now, a lot of times you hear that free enterprise is great for somebody who becomes wealthy like Bill Daniels, but you'll wonder, is it also good for those people I was talking about at the beginning, those people at the bottom? Is free enterprise really good for them too? I'm gonna ask you to consider something. I'm gonna ask you to consider the greatest miracle that I, I know of in my lifetime. I want you to compare poverty in 1970 with today, looking around the world. And here's a question for you. I'm going to answer it in a second, but I want you to ponder it. What has happened to world poverty since 1970? Take the world's worst poverty, living on a dollar a day or less. What's happened to the percentage of the world's population living in that kind of poverty? Here's the answer. It has declined by 80%. I bet you didn't know that. 80%. Incredible. The greatest anti-poverty miracle in the history of mankind has occurred only in the past few decades. So why? What happened? Was it governments? Was it US foreign aid? Was it charity? Those things are great. But that's not the answer. The thing that really wiped out 80% of the world's worst poverty in my lifetime was five things. Globalization, free trade, property rights, rule of law, and entrepreneurship. That's a fact. It was, in short, the American free enterprise system. It was the values of Bill Daniels and the values of yours that spread around the world after 1970 and pulled billions of people out of poverty. There is no anti-poverty achievement that ever comes close. This is the true moral importance of the system that Bill fought for and that he spread and shares with you in this program. What an incredible blessing. Just by doing what you do in your careers and creating the value that you create as you earn your success, you will pull people out of poverty without even knowing it. What a wonderful miracle that is. Bill Daniels once said, the free enterprise system is the eighth wonder of the world. The ninth is that so few people understand it. Part of the visionary leadership, no matter what your politics, are part, are, come down to understanding this system and sharing it with others. This is truly important stuff. This is not about the political system. This is not about being a Democrat or Republican. This is about helping others to earn their success, not to learn their helplessness, and to lift them up out of poverty. It's about sharing blessings with others. I'm going to finish now, but I want to summarize. As you embark upon your great journeys, remember the values of the man who put his name on this program. Always remember the mission of leadership, to lift other people up. How? By earning your success and helping other people to earn theirs in all that you do. And don't forget, 
There's a system that makes it possible, a system you need to fight for, the free enterprise system. Congratulations on this incredible achievement. Congratulations on this honor. My last words are only to say good luck, God bless you, and thank you for helping this great country.